welcome to The Simple Truth. I, I pray that you've been listening to this program and, and it's basically about hearing God's voice. Um, we're talking about hearing God here today. Um, we're in our third lesson. Uh, and I want you to understand that, that God speaks to each one of His children. You know, parents, we speak to our children. Uh, if, you're, if you're not a parent right now and you have, you know, uh, nephews and nieces or friends, children, you know, you speak to them because they're family to you. And God is speaking to you and I because we're family. We have been adopted into the family of God. And that is important for us to know that God, our Father, wants to speak to us. And, and as I mentioned last week, He not only speaks to us from, from the Word, um, and, and in the Greek there's two words for the Scriptures. One is logos, which is the written Word, is simply put. And then He's talked about rhema Word, which is spoken Word. And, and there's times when you read the Scripture that it speaks to you or to your situation so that you know that God is speaking to you. Uh, I don't know how many times I've had people, uh, when I, 35 years ago or so, when I started uh, in, into teaching Bible study um, or teaching Sunday school, um, uh, not understanding that not everybody listens to what God says, I would say make statements like, well, the Lord told me. And, and I even had a person ask me one time, he says, God speaks to you? And I thought, I'm not anything special. I'm, I'm just a child of God the same as you are. But you've been in the church how many years and, and God doesn't speak to you? And many times I've sat down and I've, I've talked with someone that, said, that asked that question of how does God speak to us? And, uh, and after a while, after relating some of the things that God speaks to me through, and that is that still small voice or that inner unction, uh, sometimes I see something and I, and I get that, that impression, that unction of the Holy Spirit that I need to do something about that situation. Uh, or I need to go say something to that person. If, and sometimes it's just to be there. Uh, I learned uh, that from an, another brother that, that sometimes it's not what you say. It's just you being there. And God speaks through our presence. The same as He speaks to us through His presence. But I want you to understand that, that God speaks to you and I on a regular basis if we just listen. Because we're important to Him. And if He's that important to you as He is to me, you listen for that still, small voice, that unction of the Holy Spirit, that, that knowing that suddenly God is speaking to you. Now, I want to go to John chapter 10 for the start today, verse 14. Jesus is speaking here and He says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. So, so look at this, what he's saying. He's saying, I'm your good shepherd. I'm your good pastor. And I know my sheep. You know, we, if we go to Revelations um, and talk about the, the seven churches, that, he, that, he, that letter that he writes to the seven churches, it says, I know your work. You know, God knows our work. He knows you and I. He knows us on a personal level. And then he says, and am known by my own. In other words, those that are in Christ knows him. Okay? Uh, here I want to put out, some, you know, we talk, we have so many people in our churches today that, that, that go to church and they say they have a relationship but you don't see that relationship in, in, in operation. You know, they, they say, well, I go to church, uh, that kind of thing. It's more than that, people. It is knowing Christ on that personal level. You can't just be close. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. You have to be in Christ. And Christ knows us and we need to know Him, and we do know Him, because we learn it from the Word and from the, from the conversations that we can have with Him in our prayer life. We'll go on, verse 15, and, 
As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. He says, here's the relationship, the unity between the Father and the Son. I know Him, and He knows me. It is that level of knowing each other intimately. It's to a place, you know, uh, there's sometimes that, that when a couple's been together for many, many years that when one says something, the other could finish the sentence for them, okay? It's knowing each other that well. And we are to know Christ that well. And if we know Christ that well, we also know the Father that well. And he brings out, uh, you know, I will, I'm going to lay down my life for the sheep. He's talking about he's going to die for you and I. It, 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 it's a first initiating look at, at what's going to happen later. His purpose for coming to earth. Uh, verse 16, And the other sheep I have are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. I'm glad he added this verse because this includes you and I. We may not be Jewish but we're a part of the kingdom of God. We're that other flock that he's talking about so that now he has one flock and that is the children of God. And he says, they will hear my voice. If you're not hearing God's voice, you need to make some checks in your life to see why. Okay? Is it because you're not listening or is it because you don't know Christ yourself? And I pray that you do know Christ. And I pray that you will listen more intently to what he's saying. Because uh, as I've, I've said at other times to other people, sometimes it comes out of left field. You're not even thinking about that. And God speaks to you about something else. And when you've spent time with, with him in the word and in you know what his character is, and you know that these things is how he would do things. It is the love that you feel through it. It is the, the confirmation of the Spirit in you that, that gives you um, peace about what's being said to you. Or if it's not the Lord, a check that says, wait a minute, you need to check this out. You need to prove this first before you accept it. But he says, they will hear my voice. You can hear God's voice if you're willing to listen. Verse 17, Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life and I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it, it again. And this command I have received from my Father. Notice he says this is a command I can lay my life down for the, for the people and I can pick it back up again. And it's a picture of the death and resurrection that's going to be happening in future chapters, but it's already happened for you and I now. And he says, that is a commandment for my father. I haven't chosen this in, in a sense, uh, though he agrees to it, but it's a commandment to him. Then I want you to Step over just a little bit to verse 27. And, and again, Jesus is speaking to us. And again, he tells us, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. This is a picture. They would have been very well understood what he was talking about being around sheep, because that's one of the major things that 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 they do in that area, uh, raising sheep. Uh, we're not so, so knowledgeable of it right here in, in the U.S., uh, though they are sheep farmers here, in, yeah, but, but not like what it was commonplace in Israel at the time and still is today. You will still see uh, herders uh, with their sheep. And, and, and so Jesus is talking in, in, a, in a picture language to tell us, you know, the sheep knows their leader's voice. And you and I need to know our leader's voice. And that is to spend time with him. And we spend time with him, not only in prayer. And again, I tell you, prayer is not a one-way street. Uh, we need not only to be praying, 
uh, for all those needs that, that we have for ourselves and other people and the, and the things that's going on around us and, and to uh, ask for his protection. But we need to be also listening for that word from him so that we can understand and sometimes be warned of what is to come or to change our, our prayers so that they can be answered. Uh, but it, twice he's told us in just a few verses that my sheep, in other words, you and I can hear his voice. Now, when in scripture, when it comes that close together, just a few verses away, and sometimes uh, it is a explanation point. I mean, it, it, he's dotting this thing so that underline this, bold underline this, um, uh, do whatever you have to, but know this is important that you know that you can hear my voice. And so we need to know that, and we need to live in that. Now, let's go over verse 16. I'm, we can hear his audible voice. I know there's people today who says, no, that don't happen. I'm telling you, it can happen. It's probably not very often that we would hear God's voice, but it's possible. Nothing's impossible for God. You need to remember that. Now, over in chapter 16, and we're going to start with verse 12. Uh, and here Jesus is speaking to the disciples, but he's speaking to you and I also in this, in this verse. Uh, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. He's saying, I've got a lot more that I need to be teaching you, a lot more things I need for you to understand, but you haven't reached that level that you would understand. Um, it is the idea that, that um, I'm thinking of, of, you know, arithmetic, calculation. I'm thinking, you know, the first day you walk into an algebra class, it's all the way over your head, okay? You don't understand any of it. But after a while, after a few lessons, you start to gain the, the, the reasoning behind algebra and, and the thinking of it. And so you can understand it and that you can receive it and put it in your life. Well, that's what Jesus is saying here. I've got things to tell you, but you're not going to be able to receive them right now. But in time, you will. You see, it's the idea that we humans are, are, are birthed. Uh, and then we start to learn to, to uh, talk and walk and those things. And then we become, uh, you know, the, the teens and 20 years old when we're starting to, to do things on our, in our own and you know, making decisions on our own. And then there's the, the, the father picture or the, or the mature person that, that understands that he's not going to get everything he wants and he's going to be able to do things to be able to get those things, what it needs to take to get maybe the things he's looking for, but also that if it's not going to happen, that he can accept that. He finds that wisdom from life, okay? We find wisdom from the Word, and that's what he's talking about. There's wisdom I want to give you right now, but you can't handle it right now. Verse 13, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, had come, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Notice this. This is the Holy Spirit he's talking about. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to spirit the spirit of truth. And he's going to guide you in these things. And he's going to speak what I tell him to speak to you. In other words, there is a plan. And though the Holy Spirit knows the whole plan, it's not to be known completely, but dealed out so that at understanding, you know, if we pile everything on you at once, you wouldn't understand it all. And you have missed a lot of it. But here he's saying, as you grow, as you mature, we're going to be telling you more and more things. Um, verse 14, he will glorify me for he will take what is mine, and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say, he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now, notice that Jesus, here he's saying, 
because of my obedience, everything the Father has is going to be given to me. Okay, I am going to inherit all that. Uh, and he says, and so the Holy Spirit now, I will, you know, he will take of what is mine, everything that Jesus has, and he will declare it to you. So as we grow in him, we will hear him and, and be given revelation of, of not only his word, but of Christ himself and of the plans he has for our lives. Not just the plans he has for salvation and all through the, the revelations and all that, that, that to the end times that, that when Christ returns the second time, but your life. He's talking about that also. I want to go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 5, uh, verse 22, and uh, read to you a little bit here. It says, These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness with a loud voice, and he added more, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. So here we have the Lord himself is speaking to the children of Israel. And the, and and also the, the talking about the Ten Commandments that was given here. Now we'll look at verse 23. So it was when you heard the voice from the midst of darkness while the mountain was burning with fire that you came near to me, all your heads of the, your tribes and your elders, and you said, Surely the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God speaks with man, yet he still lives. Notice that they were afraid that if God spoke to them, they would die. So then he goes, Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of God or of the Lord our God any more. Then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from amidst the fire as we have and live? You go near and hear all that the Lord our, your God may say and tell us all that the Lord our God says to you and we will hear and do it. Now notice this, we'll send you to do that. But in day in the New Testament, God's not wanting to speak to through someone. He wants to speak to you. Now it's not wrong for him to speak through a pastor or a minister uh, uh, or a teacher as myself, but it is important that you yourself listen to him. You're not going to die from it, okay? Now I want to go to chapter 19 of 1 Kings real quick. I'm going to start with verse 11. And it talks about Elijah's revelation and hearing from God. Uh, then he said, uh, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountain and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You see, sometimes God does mighty things to get our attention, but He's not in those things. They are just uh, attention getters. But he speaks to us in that still small voice. And the reason he speaks to us in that still small voice is because he wants us to have that intimate relationship. He's not going to put it on a billboard for you to see. It's going to be a very quiet, very easy coming to you and telling you what he wants you to say or to hear. But you've got to be listening. The the Jews at this time in the Old Testament, they didn't want to hear from God. They let, go, go tell Moses and we'll listen to Moses and do it. When God's not wanting a third person relationship with you, He wants to have that first person. He wants to have that relationship with you. 
That's why in the New Testament it is a personal relationship we have with Christ. And to have that personal relationship, we have to spend time with Him, whether in prayer or in the Word, or it's basically both, but to listen, not just to be reading it to be reading it, but to be listening. I can't stress enough how we, uh, we are given the Holy Spirit and given us a spiritual ear, so to speak, so that we can hear His voice and that we can understand what He says. Um, I myself, why do I do these things? It's because of that relationship with Christ. I can remember one morning that the Lord told me, I have many people, I have many people for you to bless. He didn't tell me who. He didn't tell me how many. He didn't tell me when but I was supposed to be a blessing to other people. And I pray that I'm doing that. Now, how long am I supposed to do that? I guess until either I go to him or he comes here. Uh, you know, he doesn't give me a time limit on, well, you're only going to do this for three or four days and then you're done. You know, you can retire and go somewhere else and do something else. No, once we've been given a mission, you do that until you, until he tells you to stop. And some people don't quite understand that, that a pastor becomes a pastor and not only does it for into his old age, but that even after he has somewhat retired from, the, from being a pastor of a church, having that position, he's still a pastor. Uh, when I pastored many years ago, I still have people who, uh, when they need a rise, they come to me and says, Pastor, not just friend anymore, but now I want you to put on that pastor hat because I need some advice. And so you do that. And, and a minister will do that until the day that he takes his last breath or until Christ comes back and takes us all home. Uh, know that God wants to speak to you. And, and sometimes it's not been a pleasant thing to hear. Um, I remember one morning that I preached a, a, a tremendous uh, word and it was like I had everybody, people at, at the church into the message and, and it was that powerful for them. And I went home that afternoon and, and did the couch review. I don't know where you know what that is, but that is the pastor goes home and he and he looks over, uh, thinks, thinks about what he had said that morning. And, and for me, it was like, I wanted to say this and I didn't. And I don't know why I said that, but I did. And, and that's all things hearing from the Holy Spirit that, that uh, per, critiques our, our sermons uh, if you allow him to do that. And, uh, and I finally said, oh, man, you're good. And as soon as I said that, I heard the Holy Spirit said, oh, you're good but you ain't that good. And he said it in a way that, that I would say something like that. And I knew it was him. And I backpedaled real fast and said, Lord, you're in charge, not me. Um, same way with this, since the simple truth, this is not my program, it's his. And I'm just, you know, the voice you hear. Uh, and when I, when I make these lessons up, it's not me that's making them up. I'm continually listening to what the Lord wants me to do. Uh, these lessons that I bring to you and the word I bring to you is not by my opinion. Okay, I want you to understand that. It is from the prompting of the Holy Spirit that, that I will be reading the word and, it's, and suddenly he says, that's, that's the program I want you to do. And so then I have to get in the Word and study it and listen as I'm doing that to bring it out. Uh, and I want you to know, day life is like that. I, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a teacher. All you have to be is a believer. And the Lord will help you do the things you need to do. He'll tell you at your, at your office, well, it's time to do this or it's time to do away with that. And if you listen to him, you'll find out that every time that that happens, that the Lord is bringing it together. Uh, you know, we, uh, we marvel so many times that, that 
the music we have on Sunday morning lines up with, with the scripture. I happen to be someone who's not musically inclined. Okay, so I had my music director uh, pick out the songs. Um, he didn't have a clue what I was going to preach on, uh, but he'd pick out songs. As, and so he was being directed by the Holy Spirit to pick out the right songs. I was being directed by the Holy Spirit to, to bring out the right word and message that needed to be brought out. Uh, I probably spent more time in prayer for what I was to do, what message that was to be brought than anything else. And always they would line up. One would bring you into the other. It was like the Holy Spirit was orchestrating the whole thing. And He will do your whole life that way if you just listen to Him, if you just allow yourself to follow that anxious. Last week we talked about Mary, how the how the angel Gabriel was sent by God to tell her that you're highly favored with God. And that the Messiah was going to come in through you. The Holy Spirit would overshadow. How he talked to, uh, in a dream, God talked to um, Joseph through an angel. And it said, take Mary. This is a good thing. You, take her as your wife and, and allow this and name the baby Jesus, just as he had told uh, Emmanuel, God with us. All those things was orchestrated by God in the, in the fullness. But we have to obey. Uh, this program would not be on if I hadn't obeyed. That's, that's the truth of it. Uh, the word that's given, uh, as he tells me, he brings things to mind as I'm teaching that I, that I teach. Many times they don't, people don't even know that. But there's times when I'm reading and suddenly the Lord will open up and tell me something about that scripture that I need to say then because they need to hear it or you need to hear it. That wasn't even in my plans, which my plans are his plans and not my own. So here's the bottom line. Jesus says, my people will hear my voice. He says, my people that hears my voice will follow him. So he's not just hearing the, the voice of God. It is being obedient to it. The same as Mary, the same as Joseph, the same as any believer that follows after God. But God is speaking to you. And I believe he's going to speak to you today and remind you that he loves you. He cares about you and that he wants you to know him more. And that's what it's all about. God bless you.